I don't want to cause people to have to go back and forth. However, um, I'm, I'm, I think this is where my learning curve would be helped by speaking with, with you, Bill, maybe off, offline at some point, just in, in how we run things. But um, I think my, one of the things that runs through my mind is also, um, uh, yes, I understand there's a lot of work that's gone into this, but I also know that um, it's very evident we, the, if we were to go and uh, ask the people, the abutters, the, uh, the value of their land and time that they put in, I'm sure it might dwarf that over the years. So um, I'm, I'm concerned for them. Um, and I'm also concerned about the, the, the general, um, this is R5. It's titled the Agameticus Resource Area. And um, my concern um, is that I don't really see any care from the applicant for that other than what we're forcing them to do. And, um, and I see most of the care for the actual area from the people that have lived there. And that's what they're voicing. Um, I agree that the cluster, we all, we all thought, like you said, Brian, we are avoiding that, that avoiding that um, wetland, it'd be going right through it. And that's why I I've initially agreed to the cluster. Uh, however, I, I, I feel like um, what I felt was that we were approached, the planning board was approached with a five lot plan. So that's what I was sort of looking, seeing if this is feasible. And we've obviously all learned a lot during this. Um, my question, I guess, Bill, is, is it feasible to in the, what we are also holding to is the ordinance as well as the comprehensive plan I don't really think that this project that's being put in front of us holds up to what the comprehensive plan wants and, and inspires us to do. Um, I think if it's possible, maybe putting three lots on this land might make this an easier to swallow, to help mesh with the ordinances, because I think the ordinances are gonna start coming together but that comprehensive plan we're also charged to. And I don't think this project is, is doing that right now. Okay. Um, well, with the question that addresses all these things, at least indirectly, is, is the resource protection setback. Right. And uh, David had a suggestion that uh, it's, it's perhaps a code enforcement issue and that, uh, and that we, ask Joe to consider what he needs to resolve that with outside expertise if necessary. I love the ex outside expertise would be definitely something. That may, I think may, maybe, maybe it's not, we could, I don't know, we, we could suggest that we've had some ideas here, but maybe, maybe that's something that uh, uh, Joe needs to decide and seek and uh, to, to, to better make a, re a, a determination here. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be very important either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very important if the resource protection setback uh, includes uh, from, from the wetlands or, or not. And uh, the, the case of it that you have, someone mainly suggests that we write down our case, uh, in the middle of David's memo uh, are, mo are mostly my, my, my arguments. So they're, they're, they're there in writing. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. Uh, Jeff, you, I'm probably taking this the wrong way, and you probably didn't mean it as accusatorily as it sounded. Um, but to publicly say that we're not showing care for the environment, I just want to make sure I'm addressing some of your more specific concerns. That's pretty severe. Sure. No, I don't. I I don't mean that you're not caring for the environment. I'm. I. I what I. What I really do feel like is that um, that the applicant, you guys, what you're doing is you're trying to, to, to get this done. I think that the nature of the comprehensive plan and the shoreland and, and resource protection zone, what those are trying to do are protect the resources, not to rename 
strings of a, a brook so that you can try and make it okay. And that's what the, the conversation has been tonight is talking about there's the Agunquit brook, but oh, we don't see it on maps. We're just gonna say that's an unnamed brook. I don't think that's- That is not. I'm not saying did. that's what you're saying. I'm saying what, what is- what, what are you saying? What I'm saying is that you're, I believe that you guys are trying to look at things to make it work for you guys. And I think that the nature of the R5 zone is protection. And I don't see that happening. Okay. So, um, I, I think that with, um, with any uh, developer, if you will, the whole, uh, the whole idea is to see what are the rules and see how can we achieve what we want to do, which is making a living and meet those rules. That's all I see is what is going on. And I think it's legitimate. Uh, th this, piece, this piece of land, was this part of another piece of land or is this just been one piece of land for a number of years? I believe it was subdivided some time ago, but I couldn't say when right off the top of my head. My point being is uh, one possibility, I'm not trying to tell people what to do, is you could simply split this in half and then go get another piece of land that you could get a better return on. <laughs> because, because you can split this in half with, with no approvals get two building permits. I have no idea the amount of money you got tied up here, but uh, All right. I'm just- let, 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 We're getting a little bit, little bit off. Um, um, uh, so I think the question that I think we need to resolve uh, have to do with the number of lots which are supported in the conventional subdivision. And the first question is the limit of the resource protection zone relative to Gunkwit Brook. So that, that's, that's been a focus question. And the second one is the uh, uh, nature of the wetlands permits that would be required for the conventional. Um, and um, um, are, are there other sort of threshold issues that need to be resolved? I guess, okay. Bill, I, Bill, I guess um, from a review standpoint, if it is determined that the associated wetlands that sort of surround lot three, if they are required to get another setback off there, that kills, I'm thinking lots one through four, potentially. Oh. Yep. In this configuration, it does. I don't, you know, so some of these things. So I think the most important question is let's get that question yeah, I, out yeah, of the way. Otherwise it's just a, a, a how, discussion. How, how best do we do that? I think what would be best, I guess, is uh, probably having, um, I don't know if it'd be Brian and, and uh, the applicant's attorney or what have you, but I think having these arguments written out for Joe, um, Joe can read those through. I'm happy to discuss them with Joe, but I'm not a certified CEO for this town or any other. Um, but then I would say Joe can uh, seek clarification through the state or uh, or whoever he's comfortable with, and just and then he would get back to the board and, and say, and, and potentially including uh, uh, Bernstein Shore, right? Correct. Yeah. If 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 we get to that, I mean, if Joe just looked at it and goes guys they don't make that setback those lots pretty much disappear at least in this configuration and um but we can't get to the cluster until we get past right. this one correct okay is it the consensus of the board to uh ask joe to make a determination perhaps with outside help on the issue of the limits of the resource protection zone relative to the brook you yes. need a motion? Sure. I make a motion that Joe does that. 
Okay. Including, including potentially outside help. Is there a second to that? Right. I'll second that. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, go for, what? Sorry. I, I feel like a lot of, once again, a lot of people are here and we've asked them to be noticed early on. They've submitted a lot of letters and are we going to have a moment to get them to weigh in? No, they've had a chance for comment. This is not a public hearing. But as usual, Bill, by the time we get to the public hearing, it's too late. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to suggest that we move on and do our business tonight. I can, you can, we can do a sub motion on that and, and, and open up if, if the board so chooses. Uh, I agree with, with Bill. So, okay, uh, we'll, we'll table um, the first motion and does the board wish to open this up for public comment at this time? I do. Okay, Hershey. I, I agree with Hershey. I, I do not. The reason is we've got a lot of people on the agenda. Uh, yeah, we got a lot more to do. That we need to do, and it's not fair that this one project uh, take as, up as the chair, whole night. As, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and as chair, uh, ask us to, to move the first motion. We deliberately did what we did at the beginning of the meeting, and I'm not sure it's uh it's not going to change what we do here. And I'll 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 take that position as chair and take the heat for it. So let's move uh, Manley's motion about uh, making the recommendation that Joe do a determination with outside help if possible and by, after getting input from the applicant. I think Jeff seconded it. Okay, seconded. Jeff. Yeah, sorry. All right, yeah. so Betsy, vote. Aye. Hershey, vote. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Manley. Aye. Nam and I, okay. Okay, this is a tough one, guys, but we, we appreciate the process. We gotta go. We, we'll get to a determination on the very important issue and then, then we can move on. Thank you, board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I know it's a big agenda. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thank you, Brian. I know it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, let's take a deep breath. <laughs> um, My head hurts. <laughs> And, and mine over the weekend trying to put this thing together. So, all right, so let's return to our, uh, our agenda. Um, and our next issue is a uh, discussion point. And we um, unfortunately uh, tabled this issue the last couple of meetings because we got late and tired about the sign ordinance. And there was, um, uh, uh, we were asked by the town council a couple of months ago to make a recommendation if we wanted to regarding any modifications to the sign ordinance in the I-1 and I-2 zone in a partial uh, uh, response to the request by the folks that own Plunkin Down Place to put a sign down next to the highway somehow. Um, uh, we asked uh, David to look at it and he's, he issued a, a memo uh, yesterday or today to you guys. Um, I'm gonna summarize the memo if, and correct me if I get off of this, Dave, if I'm not saying you correctly at all. Mm -hmm. um, there's two issues here, uh, they're separate. One, the, one issue is the, the town has, a, in, the, in its current sign ordinance, uh, has a very clear um, requirement that business signs be located at the premises on which their goods or services are offered. In other words, you cannot have an off-premise sign. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's, 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 that's overarching all districts. The second issue is the size of a sign depend and where it's located. Um, is, there, is there more to this than that, David? Uh, there, yeah, that's, that pretty much summarizes it. Okay. Now the town of South Berwick uh, is uh, planning to, we learned uh, last week, uh, hang on. Um, uh, uh, where is it here? Are you looking for the elevation? No, I'm looking for the, the, the location of the sign that uh, the town was gonna put in the island there. Is that in your memo? I've, I've got a copy of, of what that, that is. Do you want me to share that? 
Uh, here, I got it. I got it. I got queued up already. We'll go to that. Okay, good. Uh, in David's memo, hang on, let me share my screen. Um, the, these, these, uh, there's a sign that's proposed by the town right now, the town council, town manager, to put this down at the, um, in the island of the new roadway. It says South Berwick, Punkin Town Road, Industrial and Commercial Parks. And they, they would, there would be a, a sign that the, that the town um, sponsors and owns that would go, go there. And, uh, and in, in, in the, um, this is not a business sign, it's a municipal sign. It would go in the, uh, the island that is newly constructed there. Um, the, the, there's been a request by the Punkin Town Place people to put a different sign, um, uh, a larger sign, uh, such as, hang on, let me do this. Uh, do we, uh, hang on, get in the wrong place there. Where is my share screen thing? There it is. Everybody see this? They talk about a, a large thing, which would be 18 feet high and uh, wide with all kinds of tenant signs on it. And they're proposing to do that. They want to do it someplace down near 236. And they're proposing, they say they've got a, uh, they've got a reporting that they have a, um, an agreement or a understanding with CMP to put this in the CMP land off of 236, not on the town property, but it would still be off their premises. And um, the, one of the arguments is that if we change the, if we recommend they change the sign ordinance uh, that allowed that, the, 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 the gates would open. There's lots of commercial places up there. There's, there's a bunch of lots. And it, how would we not allow uh, these off-premises signs for everybody that, that asked for them? Um, that's separate from the question about how big a sign they, these people could make up, in the, up on their premise premises, uh, which is a separate matter, and it, it, there might be some flexibility on that. Any questions? I would like to see if possibly that uh, we couldn't uh, ask the town council to uh, just get these signs that the people need for the business they've got right now. I'm concerned about redoing a whole new ordinance and taking a year to do it. Uh, be nice if we could uh, accommodate these people. They put a horrendous amount of money, and from my viewpoint, a very good job. And I'd like to uh, see that type of uh, development. Well, uh, Manly, they, they can't do that. They they can't do that unless the sign ordinance is modified. Right now, it's illegal for them to put a sign off their premises. And I understand that, but it seems to me that the uh, the town council has the ability to uh, do it for that particular place uh, if they so desired. We don't have any, nor does Joe have any ability to do that, but I believe the town council has. I'm just concerned that uh, redoing the sign ordinance for that section is going to take a horrendous amount of time. Well, the, what, the, but that's what we're talking about. The, the, the council would have to change the ordinance. They've asked us for our recommendation. Betsy? Uh, Punkin Town Road is a public road. Yes. And there are more lots aside from yes. these buildings. Yeah, I, I think that having a town sign at the end that clearly states the road is the best way to go. Because if somebody, somebody else is gonna build something past that and it gets developed then all of a sudden well why do they get this giant right. sign and we don't and right, right now the, the, right now as you head up the, the new road which is a town road didn't used to be but the but new, new road got built to town road last year there's a uh, brixham dance works on the right yeah there's you go up and over and then there's punkin town place there's another lot above punkin town place which they intend to develop as another office building Okay. And then to the right behind Brixham Dance Works is a patent subdivision. That's got six or eight lots. There's only one developed now. So there's, there's, there's literally dozens of 
businesses potentially up in that area. Yeah. Any other comment? Does, uh, does the current sign ordinance um, prevent them from putting a sign similar to what they're suggesting on at the mouth of their, their actual driveway off of? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, well, they, there's, could, there's dimensional limitations to that, which could be considered to be expanded if for an on-premise sign because the industrial zone is somewhat different than other zones. Right. It's not residential. There's no one living up there. You know, there's a rationale, in my view, to al allow some flexibility in the size of the signs that are on-premises. But without a change, that couldn't happen either, Jeff. Okay. I just... I feel like I, uh, I agree with Betsy is uh, if we are able to get people to the road, then they're turning up there and going 25 miles an hour at a, and, and can view signs. And then we can modify a sign that can be on their property. I feel like that's a, a better way to go rather than have that whole 236 peppered with signs in yeah. the future. Right. Okay. Curse, you look deep in thought. I, I'm completely ambivalent about this. And I sort of, you know, on one hand, I, I feel like it's a safety issue that um, if you're looking for somewhere up there, uh, it'd be better that you don't drive by it and then have to turn around and find it and then cross over the road again. So there is that. On the other hand, I, you know, I think Betsy's point is really well taken that, you know, we will have a, a proliferation um, and yet, you know, I don't think anybody anticipated we would have all this commercial development a long time ago when the side and ordinance was put in place and maybe it's time to adapt. So I, yeah, I, I'm ambivalent completely about, so, it. I don't, you know, I see both sides of this one. David concluded that uh, in the state of Maine, there's a general prohibition for off premises signs, right? Right. Yes, yeah, there's the a billboard signs. Yeah. And yeah. if it's off premise, that's a billboard. Yeah. So, so even if you have these little lease agreements all over the place. Right. Uh, that would be. This may actually be in contravention of, of state law. Right. I don't know if you would agree with that, Joe, or or not. Manley, you had another comment? Yeah. So, doesn't seem like there's any easy answer here. Um, so, possibly, uh, I'm just throwing this out, kick around, but maybe the uh, sign that the town is going to put there could be a room uh, to uh, take into consideration the businesses that we have now and the businesses uh, that are going to come in the future and try to make them uh, work together. The, what's, it, what was explained to me uh, by Mr. Ellsworth and, uh, is that this is a small sign. It's a small island. It, 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 it fits in that place as a, as a small uh, uh, um, sign as it, itself. And uh, to add a lot of information to this uh, would uh, not fit. Okie dokie. Yeah, so um, we got a lot of other stuff to do tonight. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this down to two sides. If we can have a motion to recommend to the town council to change or not change the off-premise requirement for signs would be number one. And then separately, we'd have a motion for consideration of larger signs on-premise in the industrial zone. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, I moved to, um, sorry again. <laughs> Please, go for it. <laughs> My brain hurts so bad. Um, I moved and we haven't even gotten to marijuana yet, Betsy. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, I moved to recommend to town council that we do not change or waive the um, the off premise sign. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Uh, mo moved by Betsy, seconded by Hershey. Any other discussion? And I'll move the motion. Um, uh, uh, Hershey. Aye. Betsy. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Manley. Uh, I, I'm not in agreement. So you're no, you're an A. Yeah. Okay. He's an A, and I'm an I. So we got uh, four to one to pass on to the town council a recommendation not to change the off-premise requirement. I, 
I make a motion that we uh, make a motion. We ask them to uh, increase the uh, size of the sign so that uh, they could put it on premises. Um, okay. Yes. So I, I think the rationale for that would be that this is only in the I1, I2 zones. That there would have to be a limitation of this. That's fine. Okay. I'll go with that part of the motion. And so that the, the, the rationale is that those characteristics of the I1, the I2 zones are different than mixed residential and commercial and all that kind of stuff. So uh, the motion is to recommend to the council, and we have no specific recommendation on this, but we would go with their recommendation if they, if they chose to do it, to allow an increase in the sign size for institutions and tenants uh, on premise in the I-1 and I-2 zone. I'll second that. Seconded by Jeff. All, uh, I'm gonna go out, I'll change the order. Uh, uh, Manley. Aye. Okay, uh, Jeff. Aye. Betsy. Aye. And Hershey. Aye. And I'm an aye, so that's five to nothing. Okay, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll write that up as a, as a recommendation to the council. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Uh, Bill, excuse yes. me. Um, the council had sent it to you, so, um, uh, so at this point, would it be me informing the council or you or one of us informing the council that the off-premise issue is out, but then we start reviewing the uh, sign standards for the I-1 and I-2 district and come up with some recommendations for the council? I, I would prefer, if, if they can deal with it, they can deal with it. Um, uh, it it's it's if they want to refer that back to us, I guess we'll, we'll take it up again. Okay. Okay. All right, good. All right, we're moving along. We're doing good. Um, let me get the agenda back in front of me. Uh, okay, the second item, and this is complicated, and everybody's <laughs> hung on by their dear life on this thing. We have two petition, citizen petition articles. One is to legalize adult marijuana stores in South Berwick, and I won't characterize the rest of the petition. And the second is a citizen petition, very similar, to uh, allow um, cultivation manufacturing and testing facilities of adult use marijuana in South Berwick. They're, they're, they're separate because they're organized, I think, on the main marijuana law. Um, uh, because these are citizen petitions, there is no changing them except for legal technical words, which has already been done. So there, these are petitions which are going to go to town referendum vote, I believe in June concurrently with the school budget vote, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and the town council has asked us to uh, review and make recommendations regarding, the, uh, regarding these petition articles, regarding uh, uh, whether we recommend uh, support or recommend denial of those petition articles and why. Uh, and they have a schedule requirement for a hearing that they're going to have uh, next Tuesday. And, that re and that's for, that hearing is on the second petition article. Um, they did not ask us for our opinion on the first petition article when they had a hearing back in December. And they realized that they should have. So they would like us to give them recommendations on both articles or both uh, petition ordinances uh, before their meeting on Tuesday. And then they'll likely uh, hold a second hearing and a, a joint hearing between the planning board and town council on one or both of those petition articles to clean up the, the first one. That, that, that's confusing as hell, but that's what I understand. Now, in anticipation of this, Two weeks ago, we set forth a uh, process where David would uh, draft a, dra a, a memo for each of these articles for our consideration, which we, he did, a lot of work, 
and uh, was put out and um, we all looked at it and some of us commented specifically. Um, and so there's a second draft of both of these memos um, that requires a little consideration because we have to clean up, we have to tighten up a little bit some of the language, I think. Um, and uh, um, so we're gonna go through each of those memos separately, first for the first petition, and second for the second petition. As an overview, those memos conclude for reasons which we'll go through in a minute, that the planning board's official position as recommended to the town council, uh, and once it's there, it can be used however. People can grab it and they can wave it around, they can ignore it, they can do whatever they want. But uh, it's understood by the council. The council cannot take a position positive or negative going into the election. They have to remain neutral officially. We have the ability and the responsibility, frankly, to make recommendations on these under the under the code, under the, the charter. And so our recommendation is out there. Rest assured, it's going to be referred to publicly, um, and uh, uh, and either on by people. Uh, for and against these petition articles. So there's some importance to these things. Um, with that, unless I, has, over can I say something? I'll ask David to pull up the first one, we'll go through it. Yes, Manley. Uh, I think we've all gone over them in quite detail. I'd like to just make a motion we approve them and well, send we can, them on. I'd like to do that too, but we can't because they're not complete. So let's just go through them quickly. We can, make, we can do the wordsmithing as we go, David. Okay, so we're gonna hit the, um, uh, which one do you want to do first? Start with number one. Okay. Uh, adult store. All right. Want to make sure I got the right one here. Yeah. Yes. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Whoop. I've got, I'll see, I've got all kinds of things up here. Adult use marijuana. Can you see anything? Not yet. Okay, it says you are. Okay, stop. Oh, there, there. it is. Whoop. <laughs> Flash before our eyes. Okay, screen two. That should be it. Okay. Now, now can you see that? Yeah, go to the top. Okay, so. Is this still red line? No. Okay. So. All right, so this is the um, adult use marijuana um, cultivate. Oh, geez, I pulled up the wrong one again. Sorry, it gives me a different name when I pull it up on yours. Hold on. Uh, Looks like the middle one. The middle one? There it is. You got it. It's up now. Yep. Okay. All right. There we are. So um, <laughs> as you can see, the last I had some of Bill's comments in here when I need to insert some stuff. Um, all of the language, I believe, in black, it was the consensus of all the board and the comments that were sent to me. Excellent suggestions. Uh, some of the language got changed outright. I had to stop tracking changes because you can imagine it had just lines everywhere. So this is the draft um, that I put together. You, you got this. Uh, I can't remember what day it was now. They're all run together. Thursday. Um, Thursday. Thank you. And uh, the first thing, uh, let's see, Bill's comment. Oh, so my, my reference here, uh, the, the last draft that you have, I added this comment in here. Um, the reason being is if you had, for example, an existing building, um, so you didn't require any site plan review, the way the ordinance is written is you could have a new tenant move in there, which was an adult use marijuana use, and it would only be reviewed by the town's code officer. So Joe would have to sign off on it for the actual use, and then they would have to go through the clerk's office for licensing. We may, uh, the board may get to look at it in regards to a site plan approval if it is a new building. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that's true, uh, David. They, the way it was written, uh, if the, the, uh, the, 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 the facility only has to deal with the code enforcement officer. 
but I may be wrong on that. But yeah, well, that that's what I was wondering. If if we had a vacant piece of property and they were suddenly building a building, we had curb op curb openings and everything like that. My thought, or you know, you're ask you're developing a new shopping center or something, and it was one of the tenants. You'd have to go through site plan approval for um, the building or the use, but not necessarily in review for marijuana. It'd be a site plan approval, not. Um, I, 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 the way I read it, I mean, if it was part of a multi unit thing, then that might be true. But if it was just an adult use marijuana, it's, it's drafted right now that it would bypass planning board requirement. So, yep. I, so I could just take this out. I just wanted to yeah. give you my rationale behind that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, um, so I had to reformat this. So the section in green, there were some uh, great uh, points that um, Jeff pointed out. And I didn't know if we needed a, a specific bullet point or what have you, but his comments that he wrote are, the text that was there is just plain text in green. The text that, or the notes that, that Jeff gave me are the ones that are highlighted also in green so if that makes any sense but it was really i jeff do you want to speak to this sort of section or do you want i mean it's really about licensing issues and would this trigger that or sure and yeah. and sorry yeah I, I i think um you know so my points to that being um on the ordinance at the top there section q uh you lost me now Oops. there we go effective date yeah you know, yeah section q the effective date the last line on both of these uh it says that the that um this petition will go into effect immediately upon an affirmative vote by the voters mm -hmm. uh looking into the charter the south Berwick charter it says that votes won't take effect i mean these these affirmative votes don't take effect till 10 days after the affirmative vote. Uh, and so I was wondering uh, to us, like, is that, um, doesn't that, in my mind, it kind of negates, if we can't change that, it goes directly against like our South Berwick constitution, basically. I didn't know what this, what we were at. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, so that's a, I think that's a legal question we can't answer. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I agree with, with Hirsch. I mean, th that's very important. It's egregious, perhaps. <laughs> um, it doesn't relate to land use necessarily. And so I think maybe if our, if our memo is focused on, on land use and zoning, it'll be a little cleaner, perhaps. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I, I just, um, I just don't know if it's something that we need, we should mention to, because that in my mind, that was something the lawyer should have picked up on in my mind. But mm -hmm. um, I, I agree. I, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a big deal. Um, uh, what else is I'm trying to figure out what I was saying here. Uh, um, oh, uh, licensed person operating. Yes. So my one of the things I'm keying in on, so I, as you guys could tell from my notes, um, I spent a little bit of time looking at the state law for all of it and uh, as well as our ordinances and our charter and then looking into these. And when you look at the state law, it talks about marijuana establishments and it labels marijuana establishments as um, retail, cultivation, manufacture, sampling sites and testing facility. What I'm concerned about is the way that this, these ordinances are written is that it in the title there for adult use marijuana establishments and then we get squirreled off by they're saying retail and then the next one will be cultivation and manufacturing i think that in the future we'll be doing this again this whole dance when someone decides they want to do testing and sampling if we don't um get it figured out um so mm -hmm. I'm concerned that the way the writing is in there, that they're leaving it open in the details about, it leaves it um, open for um, licensing for anyone with the license 
to run a marijuana establishment, not just a retail establishment, which they were licensed for. It leaves it open. So I'm worried that there's a door that if I get a, a license as a retail, I can then just use that same license or I can piggyback to get more. And that's what I'm concerned about yeah. because it just has it under the establishment. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. Um, scroll down a little bit, David. You had a you had a red comment at the bottom of his. Yeah, uh, here we go. Hmm. Yeah, I think your suggestion that your third sense there says perhaps you call out a licensing section as a bullet point concern. Uh, that just says, you know, there's there's inconsistencies and and um, contradictions of the of the town code and licensing, and uh, that that could be pulled forward as a as a as a bullet item. And maybe a, a second bullet item would be what you just said, which is uh, we're, we're concerned that um, the vagaries of the main marijuana law could could allow other things to happen at licensed sites. Would something like that? Does that make sense? Yeah, like uh, the the concern with language vagueness um, opens it up to uh, project grow or uh, right, well, right. bad 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 use of words. But yes. So if you scroll up to the 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 minor comment section, way back up, uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Right here, right there. So we had two bullets that to cover Jeff's thing. One is. Uh, uh, we won't have to do the words now, but uh, have it licensing inconsistencies. And that, and, and we come up with a, a sentence that does that. And then, yeah. Okay, and I, I'll obviously yeah. words. Yeah, this. and then, then the, uh, a last bullet, which would be um, the, uh, the, the facility creep, uh, into other <laughs> other things. Does that capture the essence of what you're thinking about, Jeff? Yeah, I just I I one of most of the stuff were were the inconsistencies. I and I don't know how we handle that um, because yeah. if we if this goes into place, it's going to directly contradict like with the pair. Well, I think I think if we're if, if it, in our communication to the council here. We use that as a bulleted item. Said there, there's inconsistencies uh, and with with licensing, and and that that's that's an objection, and we object to it. I got you. And then facility creep is another objection, and we object to that. Those are all reasons for our opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, go go up a little bit to, to near the top, David. I just want to make sure everybody knows what we're doing here. The, the, mostly the the public that's listening. Oh. Um, uh. on, okay. Get right about there. Uh, yeah, come down. Executive summary. We've decided to put this at the top. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. As described below in this memo, the South Berwick Planning Board has reviewed the system position to allow adult use marijuana retail stores in South Berwick. For reasons including the proposed possible location of such facilities in all zoning districts in town and the exclusion of the Planning Board from the review and regulation of such facilities, the Planning Board recommends against supporting the ordinance. The Planning Board recommends that voters reject the ordinance at the referendum vote in June 2021. That's right at the top. And then the details followed as we go. And we go down here a little bit, you skip the history and skip that. And then, okay, the proposed ordinance. The first big problem we, we identified is in uh, zoning table A, going a little farther, there it goes. That it's, it's allowed in every single zone. And we, we say that's preposterous. <laughs> and then we further uh, note that the Y's in that table the Y's designate it's allowed, only needs code enforcement review, no planning board review. So those two things together are a terrific problem. Okay, keep going down. And then, uh, yeah, we table A, we more, more discuss that. And then minor concerns, keep going. Uh, we had the, they're important, but lesser concerns. Keep going a little bit. We have four built, four bullet items there now. Okay. Uh, License, uh, licensing authority as the code enforcement officer or the planning board. And that's misleading because the planning board has no role in this code, none. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second one, prohibited activities. Oh, sorry. The section uh, requires a minimum proper uh, property size, should be property, not proper size. 
Uh, hold on, I'm sorry. Ah. <laughs> yeah, property size of five acres uh, is required for to li license a facility. That, that's my, I'm, I'm the wor world's worst typo guy. <laughs> um, uh, this appears arbitrary manipulative and is contrary to, to allowance to the allowance of facilities in all zoning districts because residential business districts apply to have smaller lots. And then the performance standards, which are listed, we don't apply them. The code enforcement officer applies them, are one-sided and very uh, misleading as to what they do. They don't cover a lot of issues with traffic, odor control, um, uh, accessibility, you name it. Um, and then the two that we just added about licensing inconsistencies and facility creep. So those are all the reasons why we list in this memo uh, that we are against it. And then, it, then we, at the end of the, of the, of the memo, yep. go down a little right. farther to, to, to close it out. Okay. So, yeah, all this stuff is coming out. Just, uh, yep, that's all coming out. So and then there's yeah. our recommendation of the board. And um, um, so, and uh, once we finalize this, I'll sign it and it'll go to the town council. Manly. Can I say something? Please. At the beginning, uh, we said because it doesn't uh, provide for um, planning board uh -huh. review, I think one of the most important parts about uh, planning board review is not the planning board, but it's the ability of public, uh, the public, public and the neighbors to weigh in. Uh, yeah, so and actually, and not... that's an ex excellent point. And actually, David has that captured in his discussion. Okay. Yeah. That, the, thank you for that. That's a very important. But David, David's already mm -hmm. captured that. So uh, we, let's 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 if, if everybody's okay with this and the board, uh, let's uh, authorize David to make the final changes for my uh, review. And if if I'm good with it, I can sign it. I make that motion. <laughs> and seconded by, uh, moved by Manley, seconded by Betsy. Any discussion? Okay, we're gonna vote. Hershey? Aye. Betsy? Uh, you're muted, but I think you said aye. <laughs> yeah, sorry, aye. <laughs> uh, Jeff? Aye. Manley? Aye. And I'm an aye, so that's unanimous, great. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you very much. It's, it's a, okay. Okay, uh, so we can go through the second one. It'll be quicker because it's very similar. Uh, there we are. All right. Um, same. Yep, you want to go through this one, Bill? Yeah, it's, 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 it's the same thing. It, it's all the same language. There's a couple other things here because they have a something called a stage one and a stage two, which I didn't understand. Um, but it's essentially the same language. There's no mm -hmm. other significant differences, are there? No, there was, uh, I think I only had like a, the last, ah, um, again, we had some, some, the issues with licensing again, I could put the same two bullets in there. Yeah. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. Okay. If, if you're okay with that, Jeff, there's not, was there anything specific in here that you wanted to capture other than those? Um, do you want me to scroll down a little bit? I, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my my copy I sent you guys. Um, it was it really was a lot of the same thing. The, the I guess one I want to just voice it. My con, my concern is if the retail gets approved, there's no mention of the classes of license in the retail, but in this one there's different classes. So I see if this passes, we're instantly going to have issues in the town and so I, I see that as a as a big issue for now the town needs to figure that out us town council i don't know i just see it as yeah i agree and actually uh the the second bullet item above yours uh mm -hmm. talks about the ambiguity of class one and class two yeah um I, oh yeah there we are sorry it was vague regarding the difference between class one and class two. What's your? What was that, Bill? Uh, scroll up again, uh, David. Yeah. A little bit more. A little more. Yeah, it is. Uh, this this that, one that, here? J3 and J4. 
The ordinance is vague regarding the differences between a class one and a class two application and what, if any, the expanded role of planning board may be for class two. The exclusion of the planning board appears to hold for either, although public issues may increase from class one to class two. But I don't even know what they are. They, they must be, they're state defined, I assume, no? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I didn't take the time to dig them up. Yeah. It, ha it has to do with hazards, chemicals, and other things. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, for example, in um, testing is actually um, probably one of the lesser of the evils. Um, and I know there's one recently uh, been approved not so far from, from South Berwick, but um, yeah, the, the licensing all comes comes through the state. So, I mean, some of the terms and the licensing. Yeah. So and that similar uh, ex, 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 um, um, a, a, a preliminary presentation of our conclusions and it wraps up with the same conclusions mm -hmm. where we recommend that the, uh, the uh, motion gets voted down. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I also had another big thing that I, I, I think is more of a legal thing um, in the renewal of applications. I just want to mention it here. Um, in the renewal of applications part of this ordinance, um, it's hard with the numbers. They got a little messed up, but says renewal of applications section A, it says a renewal application shall be due on or before 14 days from the date of expiration. Right. And then you go down a little bit farther and under section K, it says license expiration and renewal. Section two, it says renewal applications must be submitted prior to the date of expiration. There's no limit. So at one breath, we're say it's saying that they need to do it before 14 days of the expiration and the next breath they're saying it just needs to be de done before the expiration. So I see right. that being a problem um, that the legals, legals should be picking up. And I, again, if we if this gets passed, I don't know the next steps so we can correct this yeah. or so the town council can correct it. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that whole, the, the timing on that, um, I agree was, yeah, I went back and went, well, wait a second. So their license expires. The town has to give them an automatic two month extension, basically. Yeah. Uh, you know, after after Joe gives a written notice of violation or something. And then it then there was still sort of then you could take legal action. So it, it was very confusing. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm all, I'm very good with adding that as a bullet point that the uh, license renewal uh, 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 procedures are yeah. impractical and inconsistent with other town licenses. License, the license renewal part, I guess was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Inconsistent and contradictory. There you go. Yeah. Okay. That, that would uh, uh, Jeff, that would apply to, to both petitions, wouldn't it? Yes, I missed it on the retail, but I got it on this one. So I want it, I forgot about it with the last one. Okay. I'd like to make the same motion we made on the first one. Thank you, Manley. Move, moved. <laughs> Any second? A second. Second by Betsy. Uh, call the roll. Hershey. Aye. Betsy. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Manley. Aye. And I'm an aye. So that's five to nothing. Great. Thank you all. This has been a hell of a process. Um, uh, I think our our um, our statements are clear. They're unambiguous. Uh, they, they, again, the town council can't really do anything with this, but the, the, uh, we they've asked us for it, and, the, and it's going to be entered in the record. Uh, and there'll be another joint public hearing, probably with us and the council. We can make these same points again. Again, our, our issues focus on the land use parts of it, not necessarily all the legal parts of it. But I think it's a very strong message both ways. And um, I think, uh, and again, uh, uh, we can expect people, interested parties to probably use these memos as part of uh, building whatever arguments they might be making. That may, may well happen. May not happen, we'll see. Um, 
It's getting late, but uh, is there anybody in the public you've been patiently waiting for two hours, most of you, many of you, have any other comments on, on these actions tonight? Don't we have some other people who are supposed to come before us? Uh, no, this is the last, 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 our last item. I thought Tom Harmon was coming before No, us. no, that, he's, that's inactive tonight. So uh, you're all listening, that's fine. Does anybody have a statement to make? Steve Bays? Hi, good evening. Uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, uh, many of us on the call certainly know the, the time it takes to try to, to try to review those proposed ordinances and try to figure out the, the rules and the laws. And it, it is not easy. So we appreciate your time on that. And I'm personally encouraged by your, you know, the decisions you've made to, to not support those. And, you know, I personally will use, you know, use those in communication to my, you know, neighbors and friends through town, you know, to again, to get people to understand the impact of, of what this is uh, on South Berwick and all zones. Uh, as you went through the letters, I couldn't quite see everything, but it wasn't clear to me whether you mentioned the actual comprehensive plan or not. Uh, the state of Maine, the title 30A, section 4352 talks about a zoning ordinance must be pursuant to and consistent with the comprehensive plan adopted uh, by the municipal legislative body. And that, you know, for me personally, I thought that that would be a big point uh, that was made that, you know, putting, putting retail manufacturing in every zone of South Berwick certainly is not what our comprehensive plan uh, seeks I don't to think we specifically reference the comprehensive plan, but we have a paragraph in there about the craziness of doing so. Okay. So I'm not sure it's too late now. It's probably, we, we, I'm not sure we specifically tied the two together, but we described the, the, uh, uh, the rotten juxtaposition, which is inconsistent with the rest of the town's planning. We did talk no, about that. No, and again, I, I appreciate all the work and I'm you know, fully supportive of what you did. I just mentioned that because that is something I'll bring up in, uh, you know, in, in the public hearing comments as well. Great. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Anything else? Anybody else? Bill, I just have one thing. Um, I, in our in our emails uh, amongst ourselves, uh, I had also made a suggestion that I, I, uh, and I know it's probably a little late now, but that I, I think that it would be wise for the town council to, um, you know, that we've already begun doing the, the cultivation and manufacturing ordinance. Um, I think one of the things that in looking at this, this is one ordinance, you know, it's 95A with bullet points for the different I, I feel like um, the town council should be encouraged to get ahead of this and make a 95A, not just for cultivation and manufacture, but a, but a 95A for marijuana, adult use marijuana establishments. Is, this, is that a, something that we as a board should make a motion and do, or is that something that I should well, do when I go to a, the public hearing as a citizen? I'm, Jeff, I think uh, we we have unfinished business because we had this was the, this was very um, timely to get this done. Yeah, we're still asked to uh, review the publicly proposed growth and cultivation thing, and I think I think we can incorporate your points more strongly with that. Okay, and we let's, let's make sure we do and, and not lose track of them. Okay, like that, that would be that would be the, the cleaner way to to. to to make those points as part as part of our recommendations for that separate ordinance for the medical marijuana growing uh, growing yeah. ordinance, we, okay. we can make we can make all those points in spades. Maybe not in the ordinance itself, but in the in, in memos that accompany the ordinance. Okay. That, I think I think it'll work really well. Great. Yeah. Hi, Barbara. Hi. No, I thank you for doing that. Um, I, I've had some concerns about, um, you know, different facilities, building one thing, converting it to something else, and um, and the tighter that, you know, just by reference with what you've been going through this whole meeting, the tighter we can make these things, the easier it's going to be to administrate and regulate them. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. I, I think part of the 
reason or part of the reasoning um, that uh, SNPDC was tasked with drafting the ordinance to allow medical marijuana growing in the industrial districts was to sort of address the overall marijuana, uh, you know, the whole growing thing. But there was apprehension when we discussed it, just uh, to give the board some background on it, that once we started talking about these uses and we started talking about adult uh, retail stores and things like that, there was this apprehension that if I suddenly added to table A, uh, adult use marijuana store, for example, even if we had no's across the board saying it's not allowed in any zoning district kind of thing, um, they could just make it try and make an amendment to the zoning ordinance, changing all of the sections that I'd listed as a no as a yes, which the the public in general may not understand the the subtlety of 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 the different levels of review at the planning board. So I kind of stepped away from that, but I I I, I think it's a you know I think we're going to end up probably addressing this issue regardless after the election. I mean after the townwide vote, I should say. Okay. All right. If there's no other comment, uh, good work tonight, everybody, on everything. <laughs> it was a lot of work. <laughs> Are we going to pick up the adult? Yeah, next time. Uh, excuse me, the medical growing next time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think we've run out of gas. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ran out of gas a couple of days ago, I'm thinking. And I want to I want to thank David particularly for uh, a lot of hard work in pulling this stuff together. It's not just the marijuana stuff, the, the memos on the various projects. We had uh, uh, things piled up on top of each other the last week, and uh, and Dave, David has been a great help in us. So thank you, David. Well, thanks, Noah. The comments back from the board were outstanding and, and uh, really helped shorten this review process. So, And if you haven't noticed, I started putting on my staff reports uh, last month, I think it was the actual date of the hearing because it was hard to track, yeah. you know. Uh, so for my sense, I've, I've always been putting it. So I, yeah. each time I go back to look at when was last time we heard this, it's easier to track the, so, the uh, mechanics. Not necessarily that I gave them all to you on the 17th, not saying that I'm not guilty yeah. of that. <laughs> so uh, mechanically for these two memos, um, if you can get a final draft to me, we can talk briefly. And then I can I can uh, I can sign the PDFs and, and, and forward them off. Okay, um, I will do that tomorrow afternoon if that's okay with you. I've got a meeting morning. Yeah, uh, I think uh, tomorrow or Friday, but we definitely want it off before before the week's out. Right. Oh. You. I just I just have a logistics question about our where this is going to and how we're going to advertise ourselves. I mean, how are we going to make sure that people see our memo and our opinion? There probably won't be any trouble with that. <laughs> I, well, I, I just want to make sure it it is somewhere somewhat public. So uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's a great idea. So uh, Amy, can we can we put these on a special page or a special point on our on our website? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 just say uh, board's uh, recommendations regarding the uh, uh, citizen petition. Yes, and the, the plan will be once it's ready to go, the town council has seen it, and Perry has seen it then it will go up probably all over the website. Yeah. Great, thanks. Thanks, yeah. Amy. Yeah, Great. thanks for raising that, Hershey. That's good. Yeah. But Manly, I think I'm, I'm looking for you for a motion. I'm motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> oh, we have 13 minutes before nine o'clock. What are you talking <laughs> about? Okay. <laughs> okay, well, we got to vote for the record. Uh, Hershey? Aye. Betsy? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Manly? Aye. And thank you very much, everybody. Have, have a good Thanks, night. Guys. Thank you. See you Dave, next for meeting. All your work this week. <laughs> Thanks, all of you, too. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye, guys.